Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, I've got my hands on the brand new Fender Tone Master Pro multi effects processor pedal. This new processor pedal is Fender's answer to the Kemper, Head Rush, or Axe Effects by Fractal Audio. Before we get into it, this video is not sponsored by Fender. I don't get to keep this unit, no money's changed hands, and all thoughts about it are my own. And I'll talk about how it stacks up against the competition at the end of this video. A massive thanks to Fender for the loan of this, and if you want to check it out in your part of the world, I'll link it down in the description box below. Fender have crammed a lot of great amps, cabs, stomp boxes, and effects into this Tone Master Pro, but where it really shines is in the new touchscreen and user interface. Everything is very easy to navigate, and we get an on-screen image of everything, either at a glance, in the full signal chain, or up close. For example, I can see that this is my full signal chain. If I tap on the amplifier, I can adjust it either using the touchscreen display or the dials on the pedal. This reminds me a lot of the old Fender Mustang amplifiers, but with the app built directly into the user experience. I'm glad Fender gave us the option to use both methods as I'm sure some people would prefer one over the other or both, so it's great that they're both built in. Additionally, the Tone Master Pro can be controlled using the Tone Master Pro Control app, which allows you to set up the signal chain via a desktop, tablet, or mobile device. You're able to store up to 504 user-created presets or keep it simple with a clean or dirty amplifier running your favorite effects. Another nice touch is the ability to set up a signal chain and use it either in bank or foot switch mode. This allows you to program in a full signal chain to switch between or to simply turn effects on and off on the fly, which is my preferred way of using it. Having both options is great in case you want to turn off the amp and cab sims and then use this as a pedal board with one of your favorite amplifiers. The Tone Master Pro fully allows you to incorporate your own analog or digital effects directly through an effects loop on the back. There's four effects loops on the back of this unit and you can set up your signal chain in any order you like in combination with the built-in effects or processing, or you can leave some of that off. <laughs> There's a pair of XLR outputs and line outputs on the back, allowing for easy connectivity to either an amplifier, audio interface, or PA system. There's an auxiliary input on the back for music playback, a microphone input, and MIDI connectivity. If you want, you can use this as a standalone audio interface. So if you want to plug it directly into your computer and get all the tones that this is capable of recorded into GarageBand, Cubase, or whatever program you use, you can use it like that. Included in the menu by holding the right wheel down is a mixer view where you can assign all of the levels as needed. 
The wheel on the top right also controls your overall master output volume. The USB-C port is also handy for firmware updates as they become available. <laughs> There's a micro SD card slot on the back, which vendors say are for future expansion of the Tone Master Pro functionality. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it's worth mentioning for future updates. You can plug your guitar or bass directly into the back of the unit, and there's also a headphone jack for late night practicing, or if you just want to keep the overall volume down. Being that this is a processor pedal, the audio from the headphone jack will match what you hear in this video, providing you have a decent set of headphones. <laughs> Additionally, we get a built-in high visibility tuner, a global EQ section, and Bluetooth connectivity. You can also fully customize the foot switch functionality so you can run it in various ways in preset or effects mode. The touchscreen display brightness can automatically be set based on the room, kind of like how an iPad works, or you can set it up manually. Now by default, or at least with this unit, it was set to 41% brightness directly out of the box, and it was plenty bright even under these studio lights. <laughs> If you want to find a preset, you can use the search tool within the menu and start typing. This is a great addition for multi-effects processor pedals. Most of them make you turn a wheel until you get to preset 345, for example. On this, you can do that if you so choose, but you also have the ability to type at your disposal. So that's a really handy way of navigating the menu. Now, if you find yourself using the same presets all the time, you can also store them to the favorites menu option for easy recall later. There's also a cloud preset mode giving you 100 cloud presets that can be downloaded from the Fender Connect account. I haven't seen this yet as this is a pre-release, but it was mentioned in the instruction manual. <laughs> Song mode also allows you to create a custom bank of up to six presets for a single song performance. So you can break down the sections and tones into verse, chorus, or solo part, for example. If you're a cover band gigging musician, you can also store up to 50 set lists containing 99 songs in each. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm next gonna show you how to create your very own effect, and I'm gonna do this the nice quick way. So as you can see, we've got a blank slate here. I've already saved this, I've just called it ITB. We're gonna add a block, so we'll put this in the center, and in the center, we're going to add an amplifier. I'm just gonna choose the 65 uh, Princeton Reverb, it's a great amplifier. Now, if we want, we can customize the starting sound very easily, so let's have a listen. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just crank up the volume here. We can do it that way, or we can use these, it's up to you, and notice that everything moves, like the old side twins. Turn up the treble, you know, you can back the bass off a little bit and we turn up the reverber here. Now let's have a listen. It's a great starting platform already. So we are done with this. I really like the sound of it. So let's go back here. Now you can add effects before or after. So say for example, I wanted to add a delay. We could go into effects here, add a delay, reverse delay, space delay, tape, Tape echo, that's a good one. Let's do that. All right, so now we can have a listen to how this sounds on. We can also tap tempo using the foot switch. All right, that's way too prominent, but it sounds nice. So what we can do is go down to the mix control here and turn that down. Let's have a listen. 
All right, that's starting to sound pretty good. Now, if we want to turn or have the ability to turn the delay on and off, I'll show you how to do that now. So if we go back to the main screen here, see the foot switcher sign? We're going to set up what all of these foot switches will do. So if we tap this one right here, this can be our delay, right? So we're gonna hit the plus sign, and we're gonna turn the on off, and we're gonna confirm it on this delay pedal. So the great thing about this is, now if we go back to the main screen, and we go into the foot switch mode, I can turn the tape echo on and off. So as you can hear, I can now turn that on and off, which is awesome. Now I wanna set up my full signal chain here. So before, or going into the amplifier here, I'm gonna add two of my favorite dirt pedals. So we'll go into stomp boxes, we'll add the green box, because I love the tube screamer, and we're also gonna add my, or one of my favorite effects of all time here, the Mythic Drive, <laughs> which is based on the Klon. Now I used the signal chain for years, so you know, interestingly enough, they've got it kind of backwards to reality here. Usually they'd be on this side and then going out, but the instrument is on this side. So it's all signal chain this way, then going out of the board. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set up our tube screamer tone. Let's have a listen. I think the other pedal's on actually, if I had to guess. Yep, let's turn that off. We'll go back to the green box. All right, that sounds pretty good already. I'm just going to keep that as it is. I'm gonna go over to this guy. I'm gonna stack it into it, right? Dial in a, a great sound here. I'm gonna turn the gain down. Right now, I've got my signal chain sorted out. I could add a modulation if I wanted, all of those kind of things, but I'm going to assign these foot switches. So this one right here, at, hit the plus, going on off. I'm gonna turn on and off the Tube Screamer, or Maxon OD808, whatever the case may be. Then we're gonna do the same for this one. On off, go over to the Klon, confirm, back, and now what I've done, I've set up a board using all of the three effects I would use if I was playing live, or a combination of the effects that I really love that are built into this at least. And then I've got the Tape Echo, Green Box, and Mythic Drive. So this is my starting tone. Tube Screamer. Mythic Drive. Tube Screamer off. It's great being able to stack both of those. And for the solo, I always like a little bit of delay. Now, if you're happy with that, you can simply save it with these on or off. So what I would probably do is just leave it set like this. Hit save, I'm going to just overwrite the current one that I've got. So if I go to the next one, for example, which is the first one, and then go back, I'm back to my preset, and I'm in foot switch mode again. This is really great, especially if you're used to using conventional effects. You can set it up like you would on a regular pedal board. Alrighty, all that stuff is good and well, but how does this feel to play? It actually feels great. Now, I've owned a Kemper profiling amplifier, and I've tested a bunch of multi-effects pedals recently, and over the last 10 or 12 years or so. And this is right in line with the rest when it comes to its tone. Tone-wise, this isn't better or worse than any of the others. What this comes down to though, is the way that you interact with it, its overall usability and functionality. This is where this really shines. Most of these pedals really struggle when you need to adjust something quickly, but the on-screen display mixed with the various user modes and these unique controls actually give it an advantage over other units that I've tested. I only did one gig with my Kemper before I never used it live again. The whole process was just a little too clunky and this was one of the rack units, not the floor unit version. Trying to dive into the Kemper's menu and adjust anything was a nightmare for playing live. While this still takes a few extra steps to get where you need to go, it's a lot faster than the majority of effects pedals like it. 
While these processor pedals are quite complex, the good news is you can set them up for a simple experience or you can go all out and create effects and presets for your set lists. All right, with all of that information at hand, let's talk about a few of my minor gripes with this unit. I like to keep my reviews balanced. So the startup time on this is very slow compared to what I'm used to. The Kemper, every other multi-effects processor pedal I've used so far aren't as slow at getting to where you're ready to play as this. This does take quite a bit of time. And while I talk, I'll leave that process on screen so you can get a good sense of just how long it takes to start up. This is definitely not a deal breaker and if you're a studio musician where you're not in a rush to set up, no big deal, right? But it's definitely worth mentioning. Secondly, I'm not a huge fan of having the input jack on the back with the rest of the cable management. I would have much preferred to either have it on the side or on the front or have an alternative input right here. Again, this is a minor nitpick. It's definitely not a deal breaker, but something worth mentioning. If you plan on plonking this on a desk, for example, you always have to reach around the back and plug in your instrument cable, whereas others, you would plug them in on the front or on the side. So yeah, just definitely something worth mentioning. It depends on your user scenario. I think for a gigging musician, this won't be a big deal. Lastly, I noticed a small click on the looper. Now I tested this with a whole bunch of different presets and I don't know if it was the switch causing that click or whether or not this is a known bug. I haven't downloaded the latest firmware for this as of shooting this video. I know one's just come out at the time of filming, at least behind the scenes here. So yeah, that may have already been addressed, but I just wanted to put it in for the sake of transparency. With that click aside, the looper functionality is fantastic. And I love the fact you can adjust the level of the playback using the two switches on the side as you loop. This is awesome because if you've ever used the looper before, it generally keeps raising the overall output volume as you keep stacking on guitar layers. With this, you can drop that back and then solo over it with ease. It's a really smart design. I don't think I've seen that on another unit. Overall, Fender has done a great job with this new multi-effects unit. There's plenty of great sounds from classic amps and pedals, all that kind of stuff to get you started, or you can build up your own sound the way that you want it. I would say the strength of this unit is its form factor and usability. The on-screen display makes creating, changing, or finding presets a whole lot easier than other alternatives. The clean Fender tones are great, as is the Marshall, Vox, and EVH models. They all sound very accurate. Thanks to Fender for letting me check this out. Again, this video is not sponsored. If it was helpful, please leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to check it out using the links in the description box below. Catch you soon. See ya.